Some of the industry stuff going on, sort of like almost like a Wall Street slash sort of industrial park setup. So here is a uh, bird's eye view, plan view of 
what the rim of the crater will look like. The fact that the crater is continuously sloping all the way to the base, we'll actually have to build out supports. Because if all of you guys understand this fundamental architecture and then you start integrating your bits and pieces into it, that is one of the most critical ingredients to get a compliant proposal and eventually win. I'm impressed. These are awesome drawings, by the way. Really great job. This has the propensity to get really busy really fast. You know, you gotta get past just the boundaries of the, of the settlement. Yeah. Show, yeah. show the judges where it's setting, where it sets, where it has been set, where it sits. Well, you're an English teacher too, right? Yeah. <laughs> where it's, where what someone has set it and it is now sitting, is that right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm wrong. Uh, like Jack said, it's, it's very important that you understand uh, what your work and where it falls in the central picture. Well, I think we should all give a massive round of applause. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what I spent the first part of the competition doing is taking the RFP, and David's been helping me. Uh, he's been great. Um, and what we do is we skim the RFP, and we see where do points overlap. And the biggest issue we usually find in this 42-hour competition is that people don't talk to each other. Um, and so tomorrow, starting at 8.45 a.m., you're going to get really familiar with my voice and Paxson's annoying little clack clack loose loose thing. Um, but that's how I'm getting your attention. When I'm going to call out the uh, sections that I need to have a tiger team, we're going to go meet outside in the hall. Um, and I'm going to start by facilitating the conversation. So are there any questions about how tiger teams work? Yeah, so we got to be out here pretty soon. So let's uh, clean the room up. Tables and chairs and get where they are. Just clean your stuff up. If you see any trash on the floor, get rid of it. Tomorrow's going to be yeah, a long day. Nothing new, nothing new once we get back.
represent the red team within their own section. I want all presenters who are interested in presenting tomorrow at the final presentation, you guys are going to present at the red team today. As you're presenting, assume that the person you're talking to doesn't have any background on what you're talking about. And then also, if you have a design that you're talking about, but it's not on your slide and it does not exist. So if you want a design to be part of our overall design, make, make sure it's on your red team. That's 315. Yes. That's a deadline. Yes. 30 minutes later, you, we've got a company deadline down the hall. Yes. Watch us go to the gallows. Okay, so make sure you've got yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it! Yes! No, we don't have any milk. We got the milk because um, all the British kids were complaining about how there was no milk for tea and they were just about to like lose it. Yeah. This does mitigation system for casks. I mean, we were supposed to be ready by 7.30, yes, but like, there were people who were like, they, they want to change things. Who are these people that are- Man, you want anything? I'm fine for now. Are you good? Yeah. I have an apple too, can you have an apple? Good luck today. Yeah, I appreciate you. Oh, we have two drinks in. Okay. Okay. Okay.
I work on Space Shuttle. Morning everyone, I'm Abhishek Agarwal and I run the Asian competition uh, in India. This is Lee Salad, I spent my career uh, with most of the rock and roll. Hi, you guys don't know me so we're just, just kidding. Hello, I'm Amy Kelly Salada, and now I'm a cybersecurity coach. Hi, I'm Peter Morris from Australia. I'm uh, Jesse Berger. Uh, I've been in the industry for about 10 years. Hi, I'm Jack Gafford. I'm a senior systems engineer in the Boeing program. I'm the CEO of Diddledine, and I promise to be impartial. <laughs> I'm Dave Chevron. I retired from NASA five years ago. Hello, I'm Michael. Uh, this is my 11th competition. Good morning, everyone. We are Rob Donnell, and we are here to give you our vision for humanity's first large settlement on the moon, Alaska. We're going to start right off by the big picture, over in structure. We believe here at Rock Tunnel that we're not selling settlement, we're selling a lifestyle. Whatever we do, the customer comes first. That's Rock Tunnel's vision for us, but thank you very much. <laughs> It's probably a mistake and an oversight on our part, but I'm sorry. How do I know if the, your math is right and what's the basis for your 50 megawatts? Are we, are we supposed to make those calculations ourselves? Because they're um, not here. I'd like to know how much testing has been done to prove that, prove that actually works. Uh, Dust Limited has not even proven any technology, so relying on them is a sure path to failure. Uh, what testing have you done in the electrostatic lady? I think I know the answer. Let's go on the next question. It's just an oversight, we haven't unified the numeral systems, but again, that's a mistake in our part. We are from the On behalf of everybody from Grumbo, thank you for your time today. We have more police stations than the restaurants, so are people going to be committing more crimes than eating food? There are 19,500 people, and there's 1,600 total. No, no, sorry. We are arranging to have a mass driver built on the equator, very close by. We don't need another one. We have only 1,200 space suits. So there's not enough space suits. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Grumbo. We've got a, a wide variety of business benefits to businesses helping to deal with business here. Instead of using chickens and rabbits and for our meat, we are going to lab grow our meat. The Apollo landing site is a key historical monument that must be preserved and is a historic site. Um, and if tourists want to visit it, it should be protected. In conclusion, we at Vulture Aviation can implore you to allow us uh, to use Alaska to help you take the birthplace of our interest in space travel, the moon, to new and truly revolutionary heights. I wasn't able to tell from anything how wide are these things. By that structure, it'll never hold it. It'll just get blown away as soon as you pressurize it. That second one down, where's the kitchen? And how much do those cost me since I didn't ask for them? But you say that you're going to do lab growing meat. Two stem cells to grow the meat. You're Jewish, it's actually kosher. Thank you very much. Both for the Asian. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Paxton Scott. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you our vision of the last school. We're going to start with the external design, then we're going to look at the interior design, then we're going to look at our interior operations. And then we're going to look at our day to day human life. So, this is an artist's representation of what our structure would look like on location, showing how it would map over the crater. Pizza slice, it's uh, you can pick a brand, Papa John's or Domino's, it really doesn't <laughs> matter. We've tried to keep the percentages in line with what they were in Seattle at the time of the Alaska Gold Rush. Which... Why do you have this 
Gondola. And on page 35, it says the gondola has multiple stops on the cover, and it looks like it just goes from the rim to the middle. So, um, what, which, which one's right? The, the technical drawing is correct. The one on the front cover is taking artistic license on that. I'm guessing the astronaut looking thing on the right is lunar boarding. Why do you have wheels on the lunar board? <laughs> we did that because it's freaking radical. <laughs> Can I get the last parting shot of my group? And I'm looking at a breathable atmosphere in the key, and I don't see it in the back. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that is a mistake in the uh, color overlay. Thank you, It gives me hope for the future. We, uh, we had trouble uh, finding enough room on this page for, uh, we, want, we want to say more. Any company, had you just covered half of these, could have burbled to the top. All right, so the presentation order, you know what that was. You'll see this in various forms. Donald, first presentation. That uh, big picture of the overall design is really easy to understand right from the get-go. The next one was Rumbo Aerospace, and this one was mostly consistent. Good job, Grumbo. <laughs> next one, Vulture Aviation. These folks had, they call it a sculpture, they called it a model. It did help provide a lot of clarification for that vision with a capital B. Vulture Aviation, good job. <laughs> Our final presenter, <laughs> Douglas and Flechtel. Freaking that, it was great. <laughs> so this is the only settlement that was not too big for the population. Um, these folks, for each phase of the construction processes, uh, mentioned or stated which subcontractors would be involved and how they would be involved. They actually showed when each subcontractor, lots of, sub, lots of subcontractors, would be working and what they would be doing. So that actually is how regular schedule in the real world would work. Double Dine and Flechtel, good job. Uh, we have some special awards. Quiet leadership. We want the CEO to come up on the stage Okay. and talk about why they chose the student they chose. All right, I'd like to uh, welcome Nicole. Come up here. Nicole was uh, instrumental in helping keep everybody coordinated. And did make president, applied to be vice president, didn't be vice president. And instead of, instead of making that uh, affect the way he worked throughout the presentation and getting it together, uh, I feel like it let him drive his designs. <laughs> Chelsea just walked into the room and started doing things. I mean, she was she, she was a leadership before uh, it, it was leadership was even chosen. We had a lot of trouble here because we had so many power players that we were just like, what are we gonna do? And when we were looking around, we noticed that every time the important decisions were being made, there was always someone in the back making the gears turn, and that was you, Taylor. So. Abby knows what it looks like because she's gotten one before. <laughs> From the same company. Uh, <laughs> as they torture the companies as they're waiting to figure out who the winner. And it's so much fun to torture the kids. Yeah, the good news is there's a red one in there. Uh, there's still a red one in there. There's a, oh, there's fewer. Purple and gold, go Huskies. <laughs> <laughs> Friday Harbor, you know what I mean. Go Huskies! Go Huskies, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh, still purple. What happens now? Oops!
lot of really cool people. Had a lot of fun trying to design it. Design Getting to work it. with all the different backgrounds and like meeting yeah, new people and stuff. That was like, probably my highlight. And the biggest challenge is working sleep deprived. Meeting and working with a whole not, bunch of new people who were totally down to working with me, and you know we got along really well. Our first time. The most fun was probably working with other people that have the same interests as me, making new friends and all that. Well, in fact, I thought they did really well. I mean, with more. Um, yeah. I thought the presentation was remarkable. Exposing students to NASA, number one, is awesome. You know, getting them to work with really, really smart, intelligent kids from around the world is also um, pretty thrilling. How incredibly focused they can be for such a long period of time. Um, when it's actually something interesting instead of high school classes? Yeah, when it's, when it's actually something interesting and then they're, they're actually invested in it. When it gets inspired about a career path.